Hello everyone, um, it's time for an, another unboxing. Uh, this is a parcel of comics from Ian Jackson at Crumford Collectibles again. It's my second parcel uh, that I've ordered from him, uh, from his fantastic shop. You can find him online. His uh, page is down at the moment, his Facebook page, the Cromford Collectibles page. But if you look under uh, Dalek Zen, <laughs> Z-E-N, you can find him there. And uh, he's, he's now sending these parcels everywhere, I believe, to people. Uh, mystery parcels. You, spe you specify the kinds of things you want. And um, I think I specified... British Marvel comics, uh, maybe some Beano comics. Um, I might have said 2000 AD, but he knows the kinds of things I like, the kind of 70s, 80s, British, uh, superhero-ish comic comics. Right, I'm going in. It's quite a heavy parcel again. And I'm very careful with scissors. Oh, it's the tearing of brown paper. One of the best noises. And little notes. <laughs> 70s slash 80s Zar Jazz and other thrills. Brilliant. I've got to remember to keep holding things up to camera. Okay. Uh... Ah. Tape. See what we've got. Oh, straight away, I can see an annual. Where do I begin? <laughs> right, I'll begin with some comics. 2000 AD from oh, July 1980. I can remember July 1980. I think it was about that time we moved from uh, the Arncliffe Place across to Samson Place, from one estate to another. And it was like moving from the 70s to the 80s. And we moved from uh, 70s Doctor Who to 80s Doctor Who, from Graham Williams to John Nathan Turner. Um, and I moved from the junior school to the comp. So 1980 was a, a big deal all around. We moved to be closer to my step-parents, step-father's parents. Uh, and who would have bought this thing? I don't think I was getting 2000 AD, but I have friends who did. And we would swap and read each other's comics. Stainless Steel Rat, adapted. <clears throat> the thing that I loved most of all, I don't know if they're in here at this point, was the Robo... War, War, Robo... I forget what they're called. Robusters. And flesh, <clears throat> the thing where they ate dinosaurs. <laughs> and Spider-Man, look. There's a few things in here. Spider-Man and the superheroes from 76, which I would have had at the time. In 76, when I was about six or seven, I was obsessed. Obsessed with um, Spider-Man and the Avengers and Dracula from Marvel Comics. This is the era... Um, yeah, when they did these landscape, <laughs> these strange landscape comics. But it meant they could fit two pages of American comics on one British one. It's a very clever way of doing it. But it meant that everyone was uh, reading these tiny things. Oh, Doctor Strange, drawn by Gene Colan. I would have had these off by heart, and I would have been in infant school. Strikes me as uh, pretty sophisticated reading for someone in infant school. But I do think um, that people are so wrong and so stupid when they talk down what comics were like or are like. Um, <clears throat> and about dumbing down and stuff, I think Marvel Comics elevated my sense of what reading was. And there was a great sophistication to my vocabulary, certainly. <laughs> I remember, and I must have said this before, arguing with Mrs. Nellist about the word intangible. She said there was no such word. And I said, it's what 
the vision turns. Uh, he can make himself um, intangible as well as invisible. And she just thought I was talking absolute nonsense. And I wasn't. <laughs> it's a Spider-Man with the Hulk in May 1976. I don't know who drew this. It's the time of Gwen Stacy. So they, they were from 1971. Uh, I'm just looking for the artist. Jerry Conway and Jill Kane, inked by John Romita. Romita, that's that's the penmanship, that's the draftsmanship. I can see. <clears throat> the um, those Gene Colan strips with uh, Doctor Strange are very, very seductive, very smoky and spooky. I have a feeling, and maybe I'm misremembering, he did. Batman at some point in the early 80s. I think he did. And I loved that. I remember that as a cover. Someone close to me is about to die, but who could it be? Gwen Stacy or Jonah or Aunt May? Really horrifying stuff. It was proper um, life and death stuff in Spider-Man. Yeah, Romita, John Romita. I'd forgotten. You forget the names of people, some, some stick with you, and others drop away, and you have to remind yourself. Right, that's my Spider Man comics. And here's an issue of, of TV Zone. God. From, I'm guessing, there's two. From. Well, if that's Bonnie Langford. Joining Doctor Who, it's 19... Oh, no, it's not. It's not news. <laughs> what are Colin Baker's thoughts about Doctor Who now in 1991? I dread to think. This is a really interesting time for TV science fiction. Uh, I'd kind of left it behind. And this is when I was sulking because they'd cancelled Doctor Who. Um, and I didn't watch science fiction and fantasy. In fact, I barely watched TV in the 90s just because of the nature of, of life. And these issues of TV Zone cover all the spin-offs uh, that were made um, by smaller companies. They cover the next generation, Star Trek, Blake 7, Babylon 5, when you get to that. That's all the thing. Quantum Leap, all these things I wouldn't have watched. I was aware of them and um, kept away because I was sulking. And as I've said before, if, if I hadn't sulked... Hello, Socks. Hello. I heard you were out the front. I could have been watching all these things. I did watch a bit of Buffy, but I was never a massive fan at the time. And all the Star Treks, and Babylon 5, and later, Farscape, but I didn't. And uh, it took me years to catch up with them. <laughs> um, but I did. And it's nice to go back to these at the time, you know, when people were uh, collecting up episode guides of things like The Next Generation. Um, and these things were brand new. And the idea that there was ongoing series still to be enjoyed on, I think it was Friday night at six o'clock on BBC Two, that was the science fiction slot, wasn't it? And when I uh, met Jeremy, that was something that was sacrosanct to him. Hello, Socks. People can't see you there. What's going on outside? Is it sunny? You hear Socks? People say hello. I shout at everyone. He doesn't believe in cameras. Oh, representational art, it turns out. Are you going to say hello? Nope. Don't go near those scissors. Right. You can sit there, but there's cardboard and stuff around. Right, what else in this? There's another bit of parcel here. Uh, I can see ABBA. <laughs> this is a, um, a look-in annual. Now, this is amazing to have. I do have a look-in annual somewhere, but not this one. This is a more exciting one, <clears throat> with ABBA, The Fonz, and Star Wars on the front. So it must be 77, 78. Yeah, 78. <laughs> it's Lee Majors as the Binding Man, vaulting over a fence slightly out of focus. Last year at some point, from um, 
uh, Sci-Fi Bulletin website, I actually won the competition for one of the <laughs> few times in my life. I've won a competition. And I won The Collected um, uh, by Nick Mann on Blu-ray. And it was astonishing. And immediately, I sat and watched all the Bigfoot episodes, which were my favourites. Look at that. The Mind Blowers, which is a great way of describing all the science fiction films arriving in 1978. The Mind Blowers. Look, they even include Doctor Who, out of nostalgia's sake. I think by then, because the Daleks weren't really um, around, were they? Uh, not until the next year. 78 was a heady time, really, looking back. The kids' TV and kids' comics. And uh, look, there's a flashback to all through the Tomorrow People. They were coming to an end within a year or so. The Tomorrow People comic strip. Sue Tai, bless her. Sue Tai's in the comic strip. What is it Sue Tai's saying? No one can tell. <laughs> That's cruel. <laughs> but she always said she had a line or two, and it was like, nope. None the wiser. I'm sure she was trying very hard. <clears throat> the Tomorrow People's a funny show. Um, it's so amateurish in places, but it's very, very endearing. Very, um, yes, socks. Now look at sci fi food. Now we've got to do these. These are the best bits of these annuals, really. Uh, monster moon rocks, essentially macaroons, coconut macaroons, but Star Wars burgers made from corned beef. <laughs> look at that, with a smash robot helping you. I like the idea of corned beef, beef burgers, socks. Oh dear, you mash corned beef with egg and breadcrumbs, a slice of bread, and you toast them. No, you grill them. Mm. See, we, <laughs> the 70s, we lived off fish fingers and <clears throat> Finder's crispy pancakes and uh, beef burgers. You know, we... we that's what we ate all the time. <laughs> so this would have been exotic. And the idea of space age versions of those things is uh, incredible. It used to freak me out to see pictures of Kermit behind the scenes. Look at his elongated body. There's a touch of the human centipede about that, that uh, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not that pleased to see. <laughs> I think the Muppets were... Um, just arriving at that point, I remember there being a big push on um, the merchandise and getting a kind of felt kit where you stuck bits on of the, uh, the characters from the Electric Mayhem. I remember having that. Muppets were a big deal. And a graphic novel, The Hard Case Papers, Volume 1. This is from, it looks like the 90s to me. Judge Dredd in 91. Now, this is when I just stopped reading this. I read uh, 2000 AD all the way through university. Yep, all the way through. And Doctor Who magazine and all the Doctor Who New Adventures all the way through those years, which is funny looking back. How did I even have the time for all of that or the headspace? But I did. But it's lovely going back to finding ones that um, I never got at the time. And I suppose £4 for a graphic novel then would have been dear on my student grant. The Goodies. This is a find. <clears throat> the Goodies Book of Criminal Records. I really love The Goodies. And I'd forgotten how much I love The Goodies. And I'd forgotten that I knew the episodes off by heart somehow. And when um, they repeated some recently, they had the Christmas special of 1975, the one with the puppets, where the whole thing accelerates until they're being chased around the grounds of a stately home by gigantic versions of the Magic Roundabout characters. Um, it's just, to me, the most blissful piece of TV ever. Um, and the goodies here do, um, they did books a bit like the Monty Python books or the Not the Nine O'Clock News books, where it's all pastiche stuff and usually ruder and funnier than um, 
<laughs> then they should be the nudest vicar. Yeah, they got away with a lot of stuff. And you look at the old episodes now and think, yeah, they'd all be cancelled. The Old Maid's Only Calendar, 1976. With the goodies in various compromising positions. I was really glad when um, Tim Brooke Taylor played a Zygon in a Doctor Who that I wrote for Big Finish a number of years ago called The Zygon Who Fell to Earth. It was going to be called Trevor of the Zygons. It was set in the Lake District in a guest house. Um, Sheridan Smith in it and Stephen Pacey off Blake 7 and Paul McGann. And it is very funny, very dark. But there's a bit where the Zygon, who's played by Tim Brooke Taylor, has to suckle the teats of a scarasson on the lakes on, on the shore of Lake um, Windermere or somewhere, Buttermere. <clears throat> because, of course, as we learned from uh, Terror of the Zygons on TV, the, the Zygons lived off the fluid secreted by their cyborg Loch Ness monsters. So we did this in sound effects, which is hilarious, with Sheridan Smith watching from the bushes at night, and she throws up. <laughs> These are the kinds of Doctor Whos. I wrote for Big Finish in the days when Big Finish still wanted me to. <laughs> they don't anymore. Um, okay, here's the last thing in my parcel, another 2000 AD. 1986. What uh, kind of amazes me about late 80s 2000 AD and late 80s Doctor Who is that they kind of converge. And in stories like The Happiness Patrol, you get this kind of sense of... Um, of this British science fiction all being of a piece. Very dystopian. This is Robo Hunter all the way through. I love Robo Hunter. I'd forgotten that I loved Robo Hunter until quite recently. Um, when I got a mystery parcel from another comics place called Wow Comics. And oh, this is Judge Dread Monthly where they did kind of bind ups of things. Yeah, I'd forgotten how much, how funny they were and how satirical. And Future Shocks, written by Alan Moore and drawn by Brian Talbot. Both of whom I've met in recent years. Brian Talbot's a friend of a friend. And when his Alice in Sunderland came out, we, um, we had a drink in town. And he read Brenda and Effie. But I was really interested in his tracing Lewis Carroll back to the Northeast and, um, and talking about the Northeast. And then we saw Alan Moore read in Northampton as part of a festival. And he just sat down in a library at the end of the festival uh, with nothing prepared, as far as you could tell, and just sat there like um, a kind of hippie Gandalf years after the event, come back to town. And he just sat and told us stories and everything linked up that he talked about as if he was working on a piecemeal map of the universe. <laughs> That's how he talked. Everything linked up. He was a brilliant talker and just not what I expected. He was very genial and smiley. And he made the connections between things seem um, marvellous, really. Yeah, it was a very, very good talk. And one of the, the kinds of talks that I'll, uh, I'll always remember, I think. Um, sometimes you see these people that, who you have read for years and revere and they can let you down in person when they talk. Others take you completely by surprise. And Alan Moore, I think I was expecting great things, but he really was, he was magic. So I'm gonna to get to revisit some 2000 AD from when I was 16 and some Marvel from when I was six and some look in and goodies from when uh, I was in my, I was about seven or eight. So it's a nice, Re reunion with myself, courtesy of Ian at Cromford Collectibles, and that's what a mystery package of nostalgic stuff should be about. Right, that's my parcel. That's my heap of stuff to go on my pile. To whoops, I'm shedding cellophane to distract me from everything else that I should be doing. But uh, a bit of distraction is okay. I think today I've done. Edits on my uh, fifth Elsie Mason novel. Draft two is done early, thank goodness. And that can go back. 
I've done some tryout artwork for a project um, that might uh, come true. I don't know. I've got to go and buy some more frame, more frames for another exhibition that's going to be happening, I hope, by the looks of it, in Macclesfield, pictures of Macclesfield quite soon. And uh, meanwhile, I'm preparing to uh, do this exhibition this Friday in Levensium, and I've got everything framed and ready for that. 28 pictures of Levensium are going up in Beer Cafe Bar this week, and the launch is this Friday at uh, 7 o'clock with food and drink and music and all these pictures. So I hope people will come. I really do hope I'm not sat there by myself. Anyway, a busy week coming up, and um, a theatre trip too at some point this week. Right, I'm going to go. Socks says goodbye, and um, sending love to everyone, and do leave messages below, comments on stuff I've talked about, uh, stuff you want to see on this channel. Um, and like, subscribe, and all that stuff. And thanks to Ian, and I'll see you again soon in the next episode. Goodbye.